Hello, everybody. My name is Barry Johns. Welcome back to another edition of Studio Talk. So, what's up with Antelope Audio? Let's get to it. All right, all right, all right. So, for a lot of you younger folks out there, you probably don't know just how far back Antelope Audio goes um, with making great tools for the studio. Uh, back in the back in the '90s and 2000s, uh, they were known to, for outstanding clocking. So, oftentimes, if you had a Pro Tools HD system, uh, you would either add an Apache Big Ben as an example. Or you would get uh, one of Antelope Audio's clocking uh, units to be able to clock everything together. And they were known for outstanding clocking, some of the best out there available back in its day. And so obviously they evolved into making um, interfaces and things like that for digital audio workstations. And I remember very well. Um, when they originally came out with um, their, I think it was the Orion first, or was it the Goliath first? I, I can't remember, but the very first one that you could use with Pro Tools HD. And if I remember right, that was a 32 IO unit back then. And I remember looking at that and saying, man, I cannot believe they can put that much in such a small package. And more importantly, how do they give that how do they give those features out at that price point? It was, I mean, much, much uh, cheaper than than going either with Apache Symphonies or ADDAXs, depending on what time frame we're talking about here. And of course, you know, either DigiDesign slash Avid's HD IOs or the 192. And so when it came out with that, it was just so compelling. You know, I think the most we'd seen out of one unit back then was 16 IO. Uh, and, and and even then, that was either the Apogee AD to DA16 axis, or you were going to be going into the Lynx Aurora, of which I owned an Aurora 16 uh, back then with my Pro Tools HD rig. And so Antelope Audio kind of has a long history of making professional high-grade products, okay? But here's the thing today. You know, I've been involved in forums for several decades. You can go out and find me either at the Gear page, formerly known as Gear Sluts, uh, by my name there, as well as over at the DUC and some others. Um, you know, I've been engaged in these things for a very long time. So along the way, you, you know, basically hear a lot of gossip. You read into threads that you're just kind of curious about because I was all, I always thought most of Antelope Audio's products looked very compelling uh, spec-wise, feature-wise for the cost, just really amazing values. And and so I was always very interested. So I would go in and read these things, but, you know, you keep hearing horror story, horror story. Like, for example, you know, um, driver issues. You know, you, 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 for whatever reason, Antelope Audio has struggled for many years with driver issues and keeping things up to date. Um, and, and I've heard recently, and the chatter recently seems, when I say recently, maybe the last year or so, that, that it's starting to get better, uh, and people are, are actually able to use those interfaces in the way they were designed to uh, without any issues, okay? And so, but you've got this long history, which kind of speaks to the mindset of the company and its evolution, and maybe they were just overwhelmed with their success and couldn't keep up, I don't know. You know, I, I don't want to cast blame, but I also have to cast a dose of reality. And so there's been a lot of issues with drivers. But then again, too, one of the things they've always been known about is incredible bang for buck in their conversion. Their conversion has always been top notch, especially when you get into the high end professional gear. And although I've not owned, um, know any antelope products i've i've used one once and and remember being very pleased with the way it sounded but that was just a short little thing there and not i didn't really get that much experience or exposure to it um 
but 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 they're known for having great 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 conversion. So here you've got great conversion on one hand, and then over here you've got come on, I want I want to be able to use that great conversion by doing uh, by having solid and stable drivers. You know, another uh, kind of uh, pro and con. Let's talk about the pro of this. You know, they they tend to come out with new interfaces on a regular basis and embracing that next level of available technology. Um, and so they're, they're, they seem to be constantly in a state of development. Um, you know, they have many, many, many new features like DSP, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but you know, you know, they 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 tend to really come out with new products quite frequently. So with a company like that, if they get the drivers right, if they maintain their quality and conversion and clocking, you know, th then at that point you should be able to get the value out of that newly re released interface. Okay, so now that same pro is also a con and a big complaint. A lot of their users feel like, you know, as soon as you buy into their products and their ecosystem, it's just, it, it seems like overnight the product is now discontinued. And more importantly, the end of life as far as service and support is much lower, it seems like, for Antelope Audio than others. So you could be in a situation where you've invested in an interface that now, just right around the corner, it's got a, a newer interface making the value of yours lower, and that one most likely is going to have new features set on it, which is great if you're buying into it, but if you already own it, your value goes down quickly, and then you have the concern, are they going to keep up supporting it by keeping updating the drivers as operating systems and CPUs and GPUs continue to evolve? Okay, another great, great, great feature that I touched on before that I simply want to drive home even more. A big advantage of a lot of Antelope Audio's devices, especially if you get into the one with a lot of I.O. on it, ins and outs, is you can get a lot of I.O. for a very affordable price when you compare the particular I.O. compared to its comp set you know, it's competitive set, the other interfaces within that. And then most likely you're probably going to get superior clocking and conversion going with Antelope Audio. So you can get a lot of IOs. There's really no con to this at all. The more ins and outs you have, the better off you're prepared. Now, when you're contemplating that purchase, I think I want to encourage you to really think about are you going to go down the road of incorporating analog outboard hardware or do you already? Because if you get enough additional I.O., you don't need to have a patch bay. And that becomes so much more flexible and you can save money going that route and have everything connected to your interface at one time or it's certainly at least a lot. Okay, now let's talk about DSP. Antelope Audio was one of the first to kind of embrace this whole DSP being able to track through uh, plugins uh, before it hits your computer so that you can be able to listen to their effect as you're tracking and not have to worry about latency. I've heard, now I don't have firsthand experience with this, but I've heard that a lot of their plugins are actually quite good and worth it and you get a pretty decent bang for buck for what you get for the cost. You really don't need much in that way, but you've got the ability to do that. That's a nice feature if you happen to have an older computer. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, I say invest in a better computer, a more powerful computer, so that you don't need to worry about latency. Um, but that's not everyone's situation. It's not likely to continue to be that depending on someone's circumstances. But having DSP available is always a plus. Now, here's a con. There was recently a big controversy about one of their interfaces that um, that uh, when people bought it, it came out. In other words, you got a certain amount of plugins, but then they were asked to pay a much larger fee to buy uh, the additional plugins that just a few months later they were giving away with the unit. 
So there were some issues there where a lot of people got kind of felt uh, chided. So kind of keep an eye on that. Make sure that you're paying attention. Maybe you watch some of their, their sales for a while and see the cost of their plugins if you want to go down that road and see how they fluctuate when they come in and out with specials because that can make a difference in your long-term investment um, and not having to spend that money down the road when you can probably get it for free if you buy the unit at the right time. So would I buy an Antelope Audio device today? Well, some of the reasons I would want one is I would want that incredible conversion and I would want um, the high quantity of IO for a competitive price. Those are the two things that I value the most. Um, but I'm not going to lie, I would be concerned about driver issues. I'm not going to worry about what that next particular uh, update or revision will be. That's not as much of a concern because that's just the nature of things when you're dealing with digital audio workstations. So all I do is expect it to do and have the features and have the features work the day that I buy it. Something new comes out, that's great. I can still use mine. It doesn't stop me from using it. But what I what is important to me is I want to make sure that the drivers are going to be there. Uh, what I don't want to do is go out and spend two grand or more on an interface and then turn around and 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 have have it not work five six years down the road. When you get into investing that kind of money, you're expecting to get some mileage out of it. That's not something that you you should be having to think about replacing frequently. Okay, and so that would give me concern. And oftentimes the best way when you want to know what a company's going to do going forward, all you have to do is look at what they've done uh, in reverse and be reasonable about it. If sometimes companies are trying to turn, you know, make a turn for the better and get things underlined and get things better, which I, like I said before, I've heard that their drivers are getting better and better and better. All I can tell you is before you go down that road, because there is so much that is compelling about their interfaces and I get it. Trust me. I've, thought a lot about their interfaces over the years, um, but I've always been somewhat hesitant. Is that fair today? I don't know. Do your homework. As always when buying, when, when spending for a large purchase like that, you want to get into these forums, get into the manufacturer's forums, but don't just rely on that because that can either be fanboy stuff or other things. You want to get into the other forums like the gear page, um, you know, um, uh, gear sluts, um, uh, what it's uh, all, all the various forms. I'm drawing a blank right now, but where you get, you know, they're, they're not beholden to any one company. You can get a varying degrees and do your research and find out uh, if that's the right thing for you. You know, I think if they can get this right to where they can make sure they're supporting their products for an, for, for a reasonable amount of time, as other manufacturers do. Get their drivers nailed down. I mean, nailed down. If they can get a history of doing that and staying on top of that, I think you get those two roadblocks out of the way, Antelope Audio. I think, personally, from this guy's perspective, you have a lot going for you, and uh, and you'd have my eyes wide open and, and more than likely, probably at some point, my wallet, okay? So... For those of you considering these products, just take this as a word to the wise, some things to consider before you take that leap off into uh, spending a lot of money on an interface, okay? So if you like the things I talk about on this channel, do me a favor, hit that like button and then that subscribe button. And then of course, I'd appreciate if you'd ding that notification bell so you know when I've got a new video coming out. You know, I appreciate uh, your guys' viewership. I appreciate all of it. Trust me, it makes me feel good knowing that sometimes at least some of you I'm out there are able to help you because that is my goal more than anything. So got a comment section down below. Please go down, put your put your comments. If you have experience, good or bad or both, put them down below. Let other people get gain some knowledge from your experience. If you're contemplating buying one, maybe post one of your questions down below and maybe one of the other folks coming in will be able to answer it for you. What have you got to lose? Give it a try. All right. But until next time, I hope every one of you have a great day.